Hey there, TV fans. Time for a brand new episode of FYC. From now until September 18th, we are going to be your one-stop shop, along with Indy the Wonder Pomeranian, to the road to the Emmys. Joining me as always, the amazing Perry Nemiroff and the mighty Jeff Snyder here for our brand spanking new episode. And we are going to be covering limited anthology series, best TV movie, best actor in a limited series or TV movie, and best actress in a limited series or TV movie. So, Indy is so excited about this episode. Indy, I'm I say. so excited to be here. <laughs> Indy, hey, hey, Indy, come here, come here. All right. Anyway, so let's just get started with uh, best limited or anthology series. So, Perry, what is at the top of your list? I might start off with a controversial take right out the gate because my number one right now is Beef. I think that a lot of folks were really excited about how good and how different Beef was. And my number two, I feel like more of the support behind that show is going to go to someone else. So I have this at number one and something else at number two. I think you have muted yourself, you're, you're, you're on mute. <laughs> All right. Trying to mute out the, the, the crazy Pomeranian here. So I have beef at number two. Jeff, where do you have beef? I've got beef with both of you because I've got it at number three. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, oh I know what you're doing. Controversial. All right. Well, then, well then Jeff, what is your number one? Uh, a different kind of beef is what this guy likes. His name is Jeffrey Dahmer. He's a cannibal. He eats right. people. Terrible. And that <laughs> series was amazing. I that, love Dahmer. That, that series, uh, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, which is on Netflix, uh, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect going into it. I thought this could be more like a docu-series, but uh, it is excellent. And I have that as my number one as well. Perry, where do you have Monster? And go ahead. <laughs> Parts of that show are excellent. Parts like anything involving Niecy Nash and then some other stuff severely paled in comparison. There's also a good deal of controversy behind how they explore certain things in that show. That is why I have it at number two. I do think it's a flashy title that caught on quite a bit, so I'm not going to completely dismiss it, but I do think Beef has more support behind it overall compared to the mixed response to Dahmer overall. Well, you know what, Perry, as they say, Jeffrey Dahmer himself likes some parts and not others. Oh, make oh make Jeff, more we're jokes. full of the puns today! It's not funny. Okay, so I have Monster Jeffrey Dahmer at number one, Beef at number two. So, Jeff, you have Beef at number three. You have Monster at number one. So what's your number two? What can I say, guys? I've got serial killers on the brain, uh, and that's why I'm going with Blackbird at number two. I thought this was an exceptionally well-done limited series from Apple starring uh, Taron Edgerton and, and Paul Walter Hauser, both of whom are fantastic. There's a great supporting cast. Um, yeah, I just think that this is definitely in the conversation. Yes, I have Blackbird at number three as well. Uh, excellent series. Uh, Taron Edgerton and Paul Walter Hauser are terrific. Uh, Perry, is Blackbird on your list? Blackbird is my number three, and this is one of my biggest regrets in terms of things I haven't had the chance to catch up on because I only hear the best things about this show and the performances in it. So it's number three, and I hope to watch it soon. Yeah, Blackbird is absolutely excellent. So I think our top three match so far, Monster, Beef, and Blackbird. So Perry, what is your number four? My number four right now is Daisy Jones and the Six. I think that it's pretty close between maybe four shows at this point, but this one seems like it's being talked about and has a bigger space in the spotlight than some of the others. So that's why I have it at number four. Jeff, where is Daisy Jones on your list? Sorry for that. Why is Indy so stressed about? Uh, there's, a, there's another dog barking outside oh, and he's just, uh, that's you know, tough. I get it. I get it. It's okay. It's Indy. Old. He's six months old. He's a little puppy. Hey, hey. All right. He's allowed. Um, well, I completely agree. <laughs> Eddie, be good. I, I like twins. Good boy, Indy. Good boy. Good boy. This is Indy. This is uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Pomeranian. 
and he is very, very vocal. He's now <laughs> six months he just old. Wants to be loved. He just wants to be loved. Oh. Right, are you going to be quiet? Are you going to be quiet? Are you going to be quiet, baby? Good boy. Good boy. Um, he, <laughs> this is I, obviously I, the I, highlight of FYC today. Everyone, <laughs> Sorry, everyone guys. To like hot dog content. <laughs> Good yeah. luck following that up, Jeff. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. All right, uh, Jeff, where is Stacey Jones on your list? I completely agree with Perry. I have it at number four as well. Um, I just think this is a show that people really seem to like. I mean, the, the soundtrack has hit like the billboard charts and everything. Um, Amazon doesn't seem to really have a stronger contender this year in this category. Um, and so I do think that it will get in, although like Perry alluded to, there are there is some stiff competition for these last two slots. There are a lot of shows that are kind of right on the bubble. Well, I, I too have Daisy Jones in the six at number four, not number six, but number four. So I love the show. It's totally my jam. Totally my kind of show. I mean, you know, I'm a big music guy and this is uh, uh, just, I love the music. I love the characters. Uh, I think the actors are great. Uh, totally, you know, a show that I really, really love that I'm like, you know, like, are other people going to feel the same way? But obviously they are. Not only the both of you liked it, but that the both of you also like me have it at number four. All right. So now we get to number five. Go ahead, Jeff. Before we continue, are there there are only five nominees in this category? Correct. Right? Okay. Correct. That's what yes, I, only yeah. five which, nominees. Which apparently we got wrong in the previous episode. I like. I feel like I was surprised that Gold Derby the the amount of slots didn't reflect the true amount of slots, right. and that might have thrown me off a little. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, so so yes, yeah, so TV, movie, and limited anthology series are both uh, have five um, five nominations. So Jeff. You're number five. Okay. Um, I didn't really know what to do with this one, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe I have like a, a recency bias thing because this thing is getting a lot of press and attention right now. I think the story will probably resonate with a lot of voters. And that's a small light uh, mm. starring Belle Powley. It's a Nat Geo um, series. It's, you know, the Holocaust and, and, involving Anne Frank and all that stuff. And it just seemed um, like it got some really strong reviews and people are really liking it. I don't know how many people are watching it, but it seems like they're definitely giving it a good push. Well, okay. So a small light is a series about the a family that, that shielded Anne Frank and her family from the Nazis. And it is a very powerful show. It's streaming on Disney plus. It is a Nat Geo show, national geographic. Uh, I really like the show. Uh, I, I have it in my honorable mention at number two. Okay. And it's, it's just a show that I guess it kind of depends on, on how many other people in the TV Academy are really watching. Cause it is a very good show. Very, very well reviewed. Perry is a small light on your list or is it an honorable mention or do you have it? Not at all. It's in the honorable mention group for a lot of the reasons Jeff just said. I mean, they are they're pushing this show hard and it's it's putting it on my radar. I've been meaning to watch it ever since we did that Spotlight Live event because I didn't get to moderate that panel obviously, but I watched it and like everything they said piqued my interest and did up it on my must watch list. But the one that I have at 5 right now is is George and Tammy because People have had a good deal of time to watch that. And you just like don't doubt the influence of Jessica Chastain. So of the ones that I have in my little honorable mention bubble that could wind up getting a nomination, I just I feel like that one's got the best chance of the bunch. Well, uh, Perry, like you, I have George and Tammy at number five. Uh, do not underestimate the power of Michael Shannon and Jessica Chastain. Jessica Chastain still on kind of a, a riding the wave of her Oscar win for the eyes of Tammy Faye, following that up with another incredible performance as another Tammy. Um, so yeah, I have that at num my number five, a small light. I have it number two of my honorable mentions, Jeff, or some of your, uh, your other honorable mentions. Well, I'll, I'll defer to you guys as far as the five slot goes, because I've certainly learned my lesson on this show about betting against Jessica Chastain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other show that I had as my alternate or, or top honorable mention was actually Fleischman is in trouble. Again, I don't watch that. I haven't watched that show. I'm, I've been told it's excellent. Uh, again, FX, this is their strongest contender this season. So yeah, I think that that is also heavily in the mix. 
Uh, I have Fleischman is in trouble at my number one of my honorable mention. Uh, Love and Death on Max, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen is is another show. Mrs. Davis with Betty Gilpin, uh, Tiny Beautiful Things on Hulu. Those are my honorable mentions. Uh, Perry, what are some of yours? Um, well, I I do have Fleischman is in trouble fairly high up in my honorable mention. It's just. Like I'm trying to think of what I've heard people talk about most, and that is probably the title I've heard thrown around the least of the bunch, and also in terms of campaign too. But you know, when I look at something like Love and Death, I think all the support with that show is going to go to Elizabeth Olsen, and and really, like I do think a lot of people deliver good individual work, but like she is the clear standout in that show. And so soon after Candy was released, and you know, personally, I did prefer Candy to Love and Death, so. I just have a feeling all of that is going to wind up hurting its chances in this particular category. Okay. So for a limited anthology series, we're going to go with these oh, five. Yes, can I give one more shout out? Please. Here's the one that I want to get nominated that I fear is not going to. Okay. Swarm. Swarm is so good. It's so good. And it's one of those shows. It's one of those concepts with, with like a unique atmosphere, tone, style, execution, where every single department needs to know exactly what to deliver. And then someone needs to be there to bring it all together seamlessly or that show doesn't work. And they absolutely ace it. And I want to see Dominique Fishback get uh, not notoriety for her performance too, because shit, she's good in that show. She's excellent in that show. She might get uh, some love in another category, yeah. which we will get to very, very I, shortly. I liked um, The Patient as well, uh, the Steve Carell, D Donald Gleason series. And then the, the one that I, I didn't watch, but I did want to ask you if, if this has a chance, Mance, is uh, do you think Obi-Wan has a chance? I think if a Star Wars show is going to get a chance for a nomination in uh, at the Emmys this year, it's going to be Andor. Okay. Uh, I don't know if... Look, uh, Obi-Wan had its moments, but I thought it was a very uneven show. When it delivered, it delivered big, but there was a lot of filler. Should have been a movie or at least maybe even a TV movie, not a limited series. Uh, I, I was I was very mixed on Obi-Wan, even though I love, you know, you and McGregor. Uh, let's move on to best TV movie. Jeff, what is your number one pick for TV movie? Okay, TV movie. I've got, I think I'm going to go with Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with that as well because it's awesome. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, so much fun and uh, very in on the joke, uh, if, if you will. And it'd be interesting because like the number one contender, at least for Jeff and me, is uh, from the Roku channel, which would be a hell of a thing if that got nominated. Perry, do you have weird on your list? I have weird on my list, but I do not have it at number one. Where is it? Number two. Okay, two's good. It's, it's not my favorite of, of these TV movies. It's probably like my third or fourth favorite um, overall. But Daniel Radcliffe was, was you know, it's an excellent performance. Uh, and and awesome. I think the first half of this movie just is like kind of great. Um, it kind of, the joke kind of wears out as welcome, I think, towards the end, but whatever. Well, uh, let's go with the obvious choice of uh, what Perry's number one could possibly yeah. be. <laughs> I will preface this by saying I liked Weird quite a bit. And I do think that there's a lot of great examples in that film of them making a lot with what I imagine was very limited resources. So I want to applaud them for that. And also it's a, ver a very unique uh a very unique movie tonally too. That's not easy to pull off, but they managed to make it work and that should be applauded. It should get a nomination. But when I'm thinking about what is most deserving of a win, the fact that we have a predator movie that is being considered for an Emmy and that that movie is that damn good. The production value of that movie is through the roof. You have to consider everything they went to, to film that on location, the emphasis they put on, on accurately reflecting Man, the Comanche Nation, their culture and their lifestyle. There are just so many stellar aspects of this film. It it doesn't just need an Emmy nomination. It needs to win this category. It deserves to win this category. I have Prey at number two. I think Prey is awesome. I think it would be a hell of a thing if a Predator uh, sort of spinoff or prequel series actually won an Emmy. That would be a hell of a thing. Uh, but I think uh, just the star power of weird puts weird above prey. However, prey is at my number two. Jeff, where do you have prey? 
I have it at number two as well. I think it's a it's a better movie by Weird, like very clearly. Um, but I think you're right that that being a Predator movie, it doesn't have like an air of prestige, which I guess it's weird to think that Weird has a little prestige, but it had a big Toronto premiere uh, last right. fall and everything. Um, I, I just think that Prey, so much could have gone wrong, right? It's like it's hard to thread the needle and actually reinvent the predator franchise and, and and it was they did a great job with it a great yeah. job great, absolutely great performance um yeah um, um that was great okay so our top two match even though our our placings might differ but jeff who's your number three my number three is my favorite film in this category i think it's an absolutely great movie and that is reality the hbo movie starring sydney sweeney if you haven't seen it yet it is streaming on max she gives a powerhouse performance i love Josh Hamilton and Marshawn Davis in this, and just the way Tina Satter directs it, um, it's fantastic. This is the movie that deserves to win, but I suspect it'll, it'll it, it's, I don't think it's going to quite get there. Okay, reality, I have it number four. Perry, is, is reality on your list? Reality is my number three, and I will agree with everything Jeff just said about it, except for the fact that it should win. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> nominated. Clearly, I think something else should win. Okay, so you have reality number three. I have it at number four. Jeff has it number three. Chaperi, what's your number three? A four. My number four is Fire Island, a movie that I have been trying to circle back to but haven't had the chance. But today's episode was a nice reminder that I should. I just I see I see this one being in pretty good shape right now. I very much remember good word of mouth. And it did come out a good while ago, right? Yeah, yeah, it did. yeah, yeah. Last that, summer, right? <laughs> that would be my that would be my only concern is is sustained word of mouth in order to keep it a top priority this time of year. But I, I do think it's it's done that. Yeah, it, obviously it has. Uh, I, I agree. I have Fire Island at number three. Jeff, you have it as well, right? I have it at number uh, four, um, four, and I I really liked Fire Island. It was very funny, uh, and it's I mean we're also in the middle of Pride Month. That's when voting's going on, and a lot of people may feel like, oh, this yeah. is the perfect time to revisit that and an LGBTQ friendly comedy. So, all right, so number five is a sort of a wide open uh, sort of field here. I don't even know what to pick, uh, but Jeff, who do you have at number five? <laughs> Okay, so it's funny. I did. I'm doing my Emmy predictions for Above the Line, um, and this was like the one slot that I agonized on the most, even though it seemed so trivial. Uh, in the end, I, I couldn't bet against Dolly Parton. I'm going with Dolly Parton's Magic Mountain Christmas thing. <laughs> I I just looked at all the others, and I was like, Are we like? Are you really telling me Beavis and Butthead's going to get nominated for an Emmy? Uh, I have it at my number five. Perry, do you have it? No, I had the same thought Jeff did. I looked at I looked at all the things in my honorable mentions, and I'm like, it, it's the same. It's the same thing I think I said in the previous category. Like, I just don't doubt Dolly Parton ever. Yeah, Dolly Parton. Everyone loves her. Everyone loves her. She's a she's a national treasure. She's a legend. Uh, and also, Beavis and Butthead, though, for the record. Well, but Beavis and Butthead, I have as a, my number two on my honorable mentions behind Reno 911, It's a Wonderful Heist. So, yeah, I don't have a whole list of honorable mentions for TV movie. So what's I your think five? Top, my number five is Dolly Parton. Oh, you also had Dolly oh. Parton. Oh, yes. okay. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, sorry. Yes, I have Dolly Parton as my number five. Okay. Uh, Perry, any other honorable mentions that you might do? Uh, I mean, not not really. Like you brought up Reno nine one one, and even Beavis and Butthead. When when those came out, they they felt like like blips on the radar to me. And that's not how you power through to get an Emmy nomination. So I, I just like don't realistically think those movies had like even something as big as Hocus Pocus two, which you know it wasn't the greatest thing. I did enjoy it. There was some talk about it, but that is something that there was talk about when it came out, and then it all went away. So. Yeah, I'm betting on Dolly Parton right now. I mean, the the pundits have this Netflix movie, Last Kingdom, Seven Kings Must Die, uh, high on their on their list. I don't know. I never heard of it. I never um, heard of it either. <laughs> there, there are movies that I have heard of and, and saw, like Father of the Bride, which I liked, and, and Jerry and Marge Go Large, which was okay. Boston Strength. That was okay. Do Revenge is okay, but it's like I, I just had a, a tough time betting against Dolly, like you said. Yeah, yeah. How do you don't don't bet against Dolly? All right. So then our, our top five for TV movie are Weird, the Al Yankovic story, Prey, Fire Island, Reality, and Dolly Parton's Magic, uh, Mountain Magic Christmas. So that's moving on. Right. right. 
I feel so, like I gotta watch that movie now. So let's move on to TV actor in a limited anthology series or TV movie. Perry, who's your number one? Wait, I'm in the wrong category. Hold on. Hold All on. Right, Jeff, who's your number one? <laughs> For support what is this? What, For lead you? actor. Actress in a limited series. Well, okay. Actor, actor. 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 Jesus, I gotta, I gotta bring it up here. All right, Perry, back to you. It's Evan Peters, obviously, from Dahmer. A tremendous performance coming on the heels of uh, his work in, in Mayor of Easttown. Um, I just thought, I don't want to say he made Jeffrey Dahmer into a tragic figure. I, I've just, I've read too much on Dahmer and, and know too much about his life story. Um, but I thought he did a great job uh, showing just particularly with like the alcoholism stuff um, and the relationship with his father. I, I really liked what Evan Peters brought to this role. He was creepy as hell though. Yeah, I agree. He, you know, the role transcended what I, what I certainly would have expected from a, from a series like this. Um, you know, I wouldn't say sympathetic, but I don't know. There's something there where there's, there is more to chew on, so to speak. All right, Perry, what about you? Is Evan Peters on your list? If so, where? He is on my list at number four. Four. To, to, okay. to, to be fair, though, I, I do think my one, two, three, and four are guaranteed nominees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, well, then who's your number one? My number one is Daniel Radcliffe. And this feeds into my Prey winning the the movie category. I think Prey is going to get all the love there. And then Daniel Radcliffe is going to wind up being the surprise winner here. I think he is, I think he is so beloved in this movie, but also in general. Like, dude is just like a ray of light in this business. And when you pair him with a role like Al Yankovic in a movie like that, I just feel like it's all going to work in his favor. Yeah, the problem is that you're combining, you know, we have two separate categories for anthology <laughs> limited series and then TV movie. And then you have lead actor, which is combining those two categories. So I wish that wasn't the case. Yeah, <laughs> but it is, unfortunately. So do you go with like the the more daring role? Well, they're both mm -hmm. daring, but uh I mean, look, I Daniel Ratcliffe is amazing and and I feel like whoever wins, uh, if Monster wins limited anthology series. And Weird Al Yankovic wins TV movie. It's going to be one of those two actors for the win and lead actor. Jeff? This is insane talk to me right now. Where is he on your list, Scott Mance? Where is Daniel Radcliffe? Yes. Two. Wow. Yeah. He's not, he's not even on my list. Daniel Radcliffe is not on your list? That's That's shocking. No. That is insane. That is insane. <laughs> no. He's not on your list. That's messed he is, up. Yeah. He is not on the list. You cannot compare Daniel Radcliffe's work as Weird Al Yankovic to like Ben Wishaw in This Is Going to Hurt. I don't think we've ever had a scenario on FYC where one of us has had someone at number one and the other has not had that person on the list at all. Or at least not that I could think of. Well, I, I, I just think this this category is weighted towards limited series, I, and and again the, the Roku thing I think that is tough. There's a lot of people who haven't seen Weird because they don't have Roku. Right, I agree with you. There is there is definitely that where it's better than has Netflix. And there's been no real push. There's, I haven't seen any like Emmy interviews or campaigning from Daniel Radcliffe. I'm not, I, I mean, not I didn't do one with Daniel Radcliffe, but I did moderate one for Weird. They are pushing it. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I don't know. I, I I think that that you know, if you're seeing Daniel Radcliffe's name on a ballot, that whoa, Daniel Radcliffe, like, just the new recognition alone. My mind right now. I don't know. Okay, no, I, right, I still don't think it's going to be Evan Peters. I think exactly what I said about the the series category is going to feed into this one. I think uh, a lot of people out there know. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to say he did not deliver a good performance. I just think that portion of the story and how they explore it is weaker than other portions that will get the love. Well, okay, then in that case, Jeff, uh, you who did you have at number one? Evan Peters, right? Evan Peters, and my number two is another, uh, well, not another, because uh, Evan Peters is not a movie star, but Taron Edgerton is, and I have him at number two for Blackbird, uh, the best work of his career. 
Okay, well, first of all, just to back up, Evan Peters is a Golden Globe winner. Not that that really matters. For Best Actor Limited Series for Monster, he's also an Emmy winner, Supporting Actor Limited Series for Mayor of Easttown. As for Taron Egerton, uh, everyone thinks he's an Oscar nominee. He certainly should have been for Mm -hmm. Rocket Man, but he is a Golden Globe winner for Best Actor Musical or Comedy. I have Taron Egerton at number five on my list, but he is on my list. Uh, Perry... Wait, let's back up a second. Who's who's number two on your list? Well, Perrin's my number three. Okay. And I, I think I think that Oscar snub will be one of the worst of all time on my list for like ever. How is he not nominated for Rocket Man? It still makes me sad. My number yeah. two is Stephen Young for Beef. I yeah. I really I really do think that that show caught on in in a big way, and I have a feeling it's going to do quite well in terms of nominations. I love beef. I saw the first uh, two parts at South by Southwest and I couldn't He's wait so to watch good the rest it. Of it. He's so good. Steven Yoon, who's an Oscar nominee mm-hmm. for Minari. And I think he's absolutely looking at an Emmy nomination here. The, I have a number the three. one where he's tearing up in the church like that. Oh. That's his Emmy clip. That's they use a lot of great movie. moments in the show, but that's immediately what I picture. I agree with you completely. That moment is uh uh, it's not a lot of dialogue there, but that doesn't need to be. Not even tearing up, like full-blown weeping, and it is incredibly moving. Agreed. Uh, Stephen Yoon, is he on your list, Jeff? Yeah, I have him at number three. Um, okay. I think I would be higher on beef in general if I had finished it. Why I didn't said, you finish it? I'll finish it one day. I stalled well, it. It ran so well. I watched like four episodes, and then something oh, else. Oh, no, man. Came out. Yeah, so, Stephen, you, so he's number three on your list. Behind Evan Peters. And who was number two, Jeff? Taryn Edgerton. Oh, great. Taryn Edgerton. Okay. So then, uh, all right. So then, Perry, who's your number four? I'm up to my, Evan Peters was my number four. My number five now. And and like, this is maybe where things could get a little messier. I have Michael Shannon at number five. But like, it, I mean, I mean, I just said it's messy here. But I am a little concerned in his case more so than in Jessica Chastain's case because that show came out so long ago and I'm a little afraid it's going to be forgotten compared to some newer things. But right now he's the one, I guess on my honorable mentions uh, group that I feel most confident in. I have Michael Shannon at number five. Uh, Spectacular. He's a two time Oscar nominee and supporting actor for nocturnal animals and revolutionary road. Jeff is Michael Shannon on your list. Yeah, he is a uh, number four on my list. I actually have him higher than you guys because you guys have Radcliffe. So, but I think I definitely agree. Shannon after Peters Edgerton uh, and Stephen Yen, um, I think my, it's Michael Shannon. So my five I have are Evan Peters, Daniel Radcliffe, Stephen Yen, Michael Shannon, and Taryn Edgerton. Uh, Perry, is there anyone in the top five that we missed or are we moving on to your number six? Are there only five or are there six? I thought there might six. be six. This here. is six. <laughs> six. Six. I think it's just comedy actor, actress that is five, right? Or did I just get say yeah. that wrong? Again? I, I don't know. I just know that best actor and best actress limited series, anthology series, TV movie is six nominations. Right. Okay. My number six, I went with Steve Carell for The Patient. Okay. It's another show that I feel I feel like kind of far removed from, admittedly, but you know, when when you're someone like Steve Carell and it's a good performance. It still feels like he's got a better shot than the other ones that I'm considering. All right, Jeff, uh, Steve Carell, did he did he make your top six? No. Where is uh, he? I went with uh, – he, he's not on my list. Um, I have been honorable mention, but uh, I have, I've been Wisha at number five uh, for This Is Going to Hurt. Haven't seen mm. a, 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 the show. I don't even think I've seen a trailer, but I've heard that this show is, like, incredible from the people who have watched it. Uh, do you, so who's your number six, Jeff? My number six is Sam Claflin from yeah. Daisy Jones and the Six. Okay, I have Sam That's Claflin right. at number six for Daisy Jones and the Six as well. Uh, what an arc for that character. Again, I just love this series very, very much. It's streaming on Amazon Prime. Uh, just adore the show. Adore it. Uh, I, I learned how to play Dancing Barefoot on my guitar because of this uh, opening uh, uh, song that they use for the credits. So I have Sam Claflin at my number six. Jeff, you have him at your number six. And Perry, you don't have him at all on your list, right? I don't, but I am open to the idea of including him on the list, if that's how this all works out. 
Well, I mean, I had Steve Carell as my number one honorable mention for, for the patient. Uh, also, uh, Jesse Eisenberg for Fleischman is in trouble. I have Ben Wishaw for number three on my honorable mention for This Is Going to Hurt. Uh, and I feel like, you know, the last couple nomination slots in this category could kind of go either way. But uh, I have Taron Egerton, my number five. Yeah. So does yeah. Jeff. Generally speaking, though, man, so those last slots, do you think that they go to, like, the show that's been seen the most or the show that, like, the smaller show that maybe has the most passion behind it? Well, that's why I'm kind of going with Sam Claflin for Daisy Jones because I think mm -hmm. there's more passion. There's a lot of passion for that show. I mean, again, I'm trying to, you know, take out my own love for the show and just sort of read the room. But uh, I, it could be that that a nominee, a nominee gets into this category – but the show doesn't get nominated for TV movie or, you know, limited series, anthology series. So it could be Steve Carell. It, it could be Ben Whishaw. Yeah, um, sure. But it could also be Justin Thoreau for the White House Plumbers, which I a lot of people liked. So, all right. So we have Evan Peters. We have Daniel Radcliffe. Because uh, it's two out of three there. Stephen Yun for Beef. Michael Shannon for George and Tammy. Uh, Taryn Edgerton, I... Right. And then Sam Perry, are you cool with that? I can then get behind that. That's, that's so, the list. So we, okay. Okay. Uh, got it. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I just, I, I think that that Radcliffe thing comedies are, are, it's tough. It's tough against all these dramas. How do you compare Steve Carell and the patient to. It's, re it's just refreshing and it's different. <laughs> it's different. It's different. And you know, when you watch the movie, you just go, okay, clearly this is not really intended to be a biopic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Clearly. There's even an in-joke about that. Like I know a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but I saw some things online on social media. People went, wow, Weird Al Yankovic slept with Madonna? And I'm like, no, that did not happen. But, you know, for the sake of this TV movie, it was funny. Well, um, all right. One last on. question about, no, yeah. one last question about this category, though. Do you feel that movies in general are at a disadvantage because that you're only getting two hours of acting as opposed to maybe 10 hours of acting or, or six hours from sure. You, know, yeah. you, sure. Could, you could view that one way or the other. It could be a, a, a disadvantage because it's less acting for a voter to watch, or you could look at it as an advantage because it's just a, a 90 minute, two hour movie and it's easier for them to consume than a full limited series. I could go either way on that uh, that observation. I, I do agree that sort of having an eight or 10 hour limited series gives you more bang for your buck to appreciate a performance in a two hour movie. And I think that the acting and actress, uh, the actress and actor nominations will be filled mostly with limited series people than with TV movie people. But I do think that TV movie people will make the cut, obviously, because I mentioned one right there with uh, Daniel Radcliffe in Best Actor. So let's move on to Best Actress in a limited series, anthology series, or TV movie. I know who my number one is, uh, but I want to know who Jeff's is. I feel like she might even have this in the bag. Uh, I think it's Jessica Chastain for George and Tammy at number one. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, Jessica Chastain had it in the bag. Uh, for Best Actress uh, at the Oscars with the eyes of Tammy Faye. And for those of you who remember her speech, which came in the aftermath of the slap, it was an amazing speech uh, if people weren't too distracted or freaked out by what happened before that. But Perry, where is Jessica Chastain on your list? I'll say for the sake of nomination, she is my number one because I'm picking the person right now who is most likely to get a nomination. I I don't think she's going to go all the way to get the win here. And I, I think I lean towards towards like a narrative type angle on that where, you know, folks are going to want to spice it up a little. And and for some reason, I'm looking and I'm thinking maybe maybe such like superstars like Jessica Chastain and Elizabeth Olsen could wind up eating up each other's votes. And then you could see a like a surprise breakthrough happen in this category, like like an Ali Wong or, or maybe a Dominique Fishback, even even though I, I'm realistic about it. I know that's a Ali Wong's the number one, right? No. Oh, well, I, I said I'm I'm I am being realistic about the category right now, and I'm listing people in order of most likely to get the nominations. I do think she's getting the nomination, though, but she's not my number one. Who's your number one? My number one is Jessica Chastain. Oh, oh OK. Yeah. Uh, well, Ali Wong, I have at number two uh, for beef. 
So, I mean, I just thought, you know. Shockingly, I have her at number three. Okay, see, I thought that's what you were getting at, Perry, with the narrative thing, because Ali Wong certainly has the narrative this year. This is a stand-up comedian who's, you know, making her first sort of big dramatic uh, turn, and I think that that could very well pay off for her. You you may be right that that voters may be sick of Jessica Chastain to some extent. My, My idea is that I have Jessica Chastain at one, Elizabeth Olsen at two, and then along the way, they're going to wind up, you know, splitting too many votes by being, you know, the like the A-list, most familiar name, the, you know, most familiar name on these circuits kind of thing. And and Ali Wong, who who I would be voting for, would, would creep in and get the win. Wow. Okay. Well, I have Jessica Chastain at one. I have Ali Wong at number two. So Ali Wong, is an Emmy nominee already for outst- uh, you know separately in another year for outstanding writing for a variety special uh Ali Wong the Wong. So uh Jeff you have Ali where? Two. Two. Okay. So Perry you said that you have Elizabeth, Elizabeth Olsen, Olsen at number 2. Yep. Uh Jeff where do you have Elizabeth Olsen? My number 1 on wow. our- honorable mention. Honorable mention. No That's right. Way. Not making the no cut. Way. Love and death. Read, read I want... any love and death review. All anybody talks about is how damn good she is. That's for the people who made it through love and death. I watched one episode and I said, I've seen this before. It was called Candy. And like you said, they did it better. So yeah. I'm not going with Elizabeth Olsen this time around. Sorry. Huh. I too have Elizabeth Olsen in my honorable mentions, but I could easily be swayed. It's just because of Perry's wow. reaction to this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that you is know shocking what? to me. Now that I think of what my number t- three actually is, Perry, you make a really great point that everyone who has talked about love and death goes crazy apeshit for Elizabeth Olsen's performance. I have Rachel Weiss at number three for her dual performance amazing dual performance in dead ringers do either of you have rachel vice on your list i have her at number three scotty we got a mind melt today yes we got a mind melt that's a very spock thing i'll take it perry is she on your list she is my number four okay 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 uh i'm gonna leave elizabeth olsen hanging in the balance here until we see how this category shapes up it's about, ahead, crazy. it's about to get weird. It's going to get weird. It's going to get weird. This is like the, the peak of the episode right here. Sorry, Indy, but this is the peak of the episode right now. Okay. So, Perry, who's next on your list? I am going with Dominique Fishback at number five. And I, I think, I do think that there is a real chance. Stop laughing, Jeff. I do think there's a real chance she's going to get a nomination. I think that show caught on. I think it plays into the viral nature of the material. It's exploring very well. And I think that wound up leaping off the screen and wound up making a very, a very, uh, you know, hot talking topic for people. It's also like not an easy binge because it's, it's disturbing subject matter, but they, they are shorter episodes. It's something you can cram in fast. And like when you watch it, even if you just, even if you just narrow it down to watching one episode to give your sense yourself a sense of what the show is about her performance in that one episode alone is like a holy shit, mic drop type of performance. So I do think she is a real shot of getting in here. I agree. She has a a very, very strong shot. So strong that she is number six on my list. Yes. Is she on your list, Jeff? No. Is she on your honorable mentions? I like I like Swarm. Um, yeah, sure. She's she's in the honorable mention list, but I didn't, you know. Well then uh, who's next on your list? Next on my list, you can't have the six without a Daisy Jones. Jeff, we are totally having a mind melt. I've got Riley Keough at number four. I've got Riley Keough at number four as well. Uh, you can't have one without the other. Uh, you, you can't have Stevie Nicks without Lindsey Buckingham. Uh, that's what the show kind of reminds me of, like a Fleetwood Mac kind of situation. Uh, Riley, absolutely fantastic in this in this series. I think Riley's a phenomenal actress. Uh, yeah, a, a member of American Honey that played a can a few years ago. She was great in that. Uh, the uh, girlfriend experience, uh, also very, very good. The um, Lodge. She's so good in the Lodge. She's scary good in the Lodge. Uh, the Lodge. I didn't see the Lodge, but I'll okay, take your word right? for it. So Riley Keough, is she on your list, Perry? She's my number six. She's your number six. Okay, you 
okay, we're keep sticking with the sixes here. All <laughs> right. So then who's next on your list, Perry? I think we've covered my entire list. We've yeah, covered she, list. she has she has our top four mans plus Elizabeth Olson and uh and, and Dominique. Okay, right. That's right. Okay, so then Jeff, who's your number five? My number five, I don't feel very confident in, but uh I did watch an episode or two of the show and it was gorgeous, and that would be the English. I have Emily Blunt at number five. But I who else English watched the five. English? Who watched yeah. that? You're right. Anybody? You're right. I well, I, I agree. But this is a this is a, a nominee that I'm going with because I'm reading the room and just seeing what other people are saying about it. I've not watched the English, but Jeff, I too have Emily Blunt at number five for the English. Jeff, this is weird. This is really weird. There's a lot of Amazon nominees, though, right? Because we're doing Daisy Jones and Dead Ringers. Like, yeah, that could be an issue. That could be an issue. Well, uh, I mean, I have Emily Blunt on my list, and then uh, and then Dominique Fishback. I have a different six. number six. You what? I have a different number six than because you guys both have Dominique. So I may. So who's your number six? Uh, well, going back to the the a small light thing, I have Bell yeah. Pally for six. You could be yeah. right. Bell Pally, I have as my number one honorable mention. Olson, uh, mention. I listen. I I would actually go with putting Bell Pally in my top six. No. No. Oh, is that, is that at at, uh, at the expense of Dominique Fishback? No. No. Well, well, that's the thing. Uh, Dominique Fishback, I'm keeping. Uh, I would get. I would just get rid of Emily Blunt. Oh, okay. That's fine. So I almost moved Bell to number five and Blunt to six. So I'm, I'm. If you want to make that move, I could be convinced to do Bell Powley over Blunt and then let you guys keep Dominique. But what yeah. about Elizabeth Olsen? Just, that feels like a no-brainer guy. Ga- like I am absolutely shocked you two don't have her higher up on the list. <laughs> I'm going to go, okay, I'm taking off Emily Blunt, and I'm putting in Elizabeth Olsen. You're going to the dark side. You're going to the Perry side of the Olsen. Well, well I, I, she great, makes a great point. And again, I just, you know, reading the room, in addition to the fact that it is a great performance, I think that she gets in. And so you don't think Belle Pally gets one of those slots? Read uh, it. I don't know if enough people have seen the show, whereas I think a lot of people have seen – a love and death on Max. I think more people watched Elizabeth Olsen. And I think that uh, Dominic Fishback for Swarm, you know, I think that she stays in. Okay. All right, then. Are you cool? Jeff, you're, you're being very passive aggressive. I don't make sure no, you're I, 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 I've been outvoted. I, I'm not going to put up a, a fight. So I'm not going to raise a citizen the Oscars. You guys, uh, well, can, have, you guys can have them too. But when, but when, you know, Bell Pally gets in or Emily Blunt gets in. I'm going to say I told you so. Well, in that case, our nominations for Best Actress in a Limited Series Anthology Series of TV Movie are Jessica Chastain for George and Tammy, Ali Wong for Beef, uh, let's see, Rachel Weiss for Dead Ringers, Riley Keough for Daisy Jones and The Six, Elizabeth Olsen for Love and Death, and Dominique Fishback for Swarm. Those are our four categories on this episode of FYC. And now that you've been enjoying our season of Emmys on FYC, stop what you're doing and be sure to subscribe to Perry Nemiroff's channel. Just hit that little subscribe button at the bottom there. Make sure you share FYC on all of your social media platforms so more people discover the best Emmy coverage team and Oscar coverage team around right here. Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, this guy doing FYC. We love the show. We know you love it too. So make sure you uh, spread the news about us and join us on the next episode of FYC where we will cover supporting actor and supporting actress drama, comedy, and limited series, anthology series, TV movie. That is next time on FYC. So until then, be well and FY. See you later.